what if the Insta360 GO 2 and the One R got together and had a love child? And what if DJI adopted it? Well, you might get something just like the DJI Action 2. Note, they didn't call it Osmo because, well, that seems to be an unfashionable name right now, but it does seem very capable of action. So what's the Action 2 like? Let me run through what the reviewers have been saying so far, but let me make this clear. I have a 1R, I have a Go 2, but I don't have an Action 2. I don't have a spare 680 New Zealand dollars kicking around right now, but hey DJI, if you want me to do a head-to-head -head test for you, get in touch, contacts are in the description. In this video, I'll be talking about the best and worst features so far in this high-level roundup, and how the most direct competitor, and maybe even parent, the Insta360 GO 2 compares. But what about that other parent, the One R? That's a 4K, 5.7K action cam device if you have the One R 1 inch version, although that's quite a bit more expensive. Well, the Action 2 certainly adopts the modular structure from the One R. However, if you're able to use the solo camera module on the Action 2 by itself, you don't need it connected to the other module, which is unlike the One R, which needs not only the processor screen camera module, but it also needs the base too, and the cage to wrap it in if you want it to be more than splash proof. But the good news is that the Action 2 appears to be waterproof up to 10 meters if you just use the main camera module. But because it relies on magnetic connection to attach to the other module, you also need a case to keep that all waterproof. So pros and cons with getting that 4K video and additional cost for that too. So let's run through the pros and cons of the Action 2 first and a roundup of the main points coming out of that first round of reviews from creators and magazines and websites who got early access to the device from DJI. Then I'll run through how it matches up to the Go 2, which will be the main comparison in this video. If you'd like me to see how it shapes up against the One R in more detail, please let me know in the comments. Let's start with the good points before we hit the problems. And there's one big problem that people are talking about, and it might be a deal breaker for many, or at least mean that DJI gets a lot more returns than they were expecting. So the form of the Action 2 is interesting. This is a square device, a bit like a less funky but wider and flatter GoPro Hero Session from yesteryear. Yes, you get the 4K video with the Action 2, and by all accounts, it's great. Good colors, great stabilization, and 4K 120 frames per second, which is frankly incredible in a device this size and it appears to come out pretty nicely. If you think you'll need this, and I can't really think why in this probable market for this camera, it's pretty nice to have. Tell me if you think it's a must for action camera users. I'm not convinced apart from the initial, hey, that's very cool factor. Although the Action 2 comes with a single built-in usable mic, DJI have also announced a new and interesting DJI mic, a dual channel wireless recording system compatible with the Action 2 and other devices with a 3.5 millimeter audio or USB-C input. Sounds a bit like the Rode Wireless Go, so I'm curious about this when it comes out. What else is good? The displays on the attached module look bright and punchy, which may be good if you're out shooting in those really bright conditions. But all right, let's move on to the not so great. File limitation size aside, you might not even get to capturing what you wanted to because, well, the Action 2 does seem to be running into a significant heat problem. It generates far too much of it. Now, in some countries around the world, you can work around this as you're able to override the auto shut off and let it run hot, but at your own risk. In other areas of the world, such as the EU and the UK, this option has been greyed out due to legislation designed to protect people from injury meaning that you might get a very short record time indeed of what is a pretty expensive video recorder. Now this is enough for people to think twice about this camera over a GoPro or a Go 2, especially if you live somewhere that's already pretty warm. Although when I say GoPro, it's clear that the Hero 10 Black also has problems with its cooling ability. So yeah, 4K recording in such a small device 
might just be a systemic problem. Although GoPro claimed to have fixed it for the Hero 10 Black, let's see what happens with the Action 2. Now, some of the combos that have been announced like the DJI Action 2 power combo, which is the Action 2 camera unit, power module, magnetic lanyard, and magnetic adapter mount, won't be available until the end of November 2021. And that's assuming supply chains allow for that. We all know how tricky that is right now. You might have trouble getting hold of one if this is what you want for Christmas. Okay, let's dig a bit deeper into a comparison between the DJI Action 2 and the Insta360 GO 2. By the way, I've got my long-term review of the GO 2 coming up soon, so be sure to hit subscribe to make sure you don't miss that video from me. DJI call the Action 2 modular and wearable, which kind of depends. It's probably not both, not at the same time anyway. In its simplest form, just wearing the camera module on the necklace pendant provided is definitely doable at 56 grams in weight. But also consider this is double the weight of the Insta360 GO 2, and you also need to use the, uh, an attached magnetic joiner thingy, which I suspect may be easy to lose. Now the GO 2 has a completely magnetic back, so it doesn't need anything to magnetically attach it to uh, the neck pendant or any other metal attachment point. There's nothing extra to lose. Next, let's talk resolution. Yes, the holy grail of 4K video and even 4K 120 frames per second is possible with the Action 2, which really is incredible, but it comes at a cost. First, the space it takes on the device to capture the footage means that you don't really have much room for files. Capturing it up to 1440p or 3K on the Go 2 means you have more room on your device, especially since Insta360 have just made the 64 gigabyte version of the Go 2 available. Yes, you can technically offload your footage or record your footage onto a high speed card on your Action 2 if you attach it to another module, but that makes it heavier and reduces the flexibility in its use. So yeah, the Action 2 has great footage at 4K with great stabilization and nice colors, though some find them a little bit muted. And I think it's possibly, and ironically, a less flexible device because of having to use the module attachment to get the most out of 4K straight video and slow motion. And you could even call it overly complicated. It's one of the reasons why I prefer the 1R1 inch over the 4K and 360 lens modules of my 1R Twin Edition. If Insta360 could do anything about the Go 2, they could make the 1080p 120fps video non-orientation specific, just like the regular video, meaning you can capture it in any direction and choose what you want to do with it in post-processing. Get onto that please, Insta360. Now the Go 2 also has issues with heating, but I've never got to a point where it's shut down on me. But I've had to handle it pretty carefully. Don't put it against your skin or your pocket once you've been using it for a while, please. One of the best features I love about the Go 2 is the ability to choose that field of view after you've shot the video, meaning not only that you can choose narrow versus landscape video renders according to whether you're posting on Instagram Story or maybe Facebook or YouTube, but you can punch in for a linear or narrow close-up view or stay at a wide field of view and choose this after you've captured video. This is incredibly useful and as far as I can see, not available for the Action 2. Sure, you could do that in post manually, but it will be far less flexible and more fiddly a process by far. Horizon leveling is a key and signature feature of the Go 2 and the Go before it, meaning that no matter your orientation, the horizon stays flat. The Action 2 also has horizon leveling function, but it's only available at 2.7K, 16 by nine mode, and only in the standard de-warp field of view. So that's not as flexible as the Go 2. Now the Go 2 has a lens cover and they are cheap to replace. The Action 2 does not. You scratch that lens on the Action 2 and you're looking at some kind of repair or replacement or because that front glass element doesn't look like it's user removable or serviceable, it could be quite a hassle. Next up, the sensor in the Action 2 is one over 1.7 inches, which is likely the same as the one in the Pocket 2. This is bigger than both the GoPro, 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 GoPro Hero 10 and the Go 2, which are at one over 2.3 inches. 
Although the aperture in the Go 2 is slightly wider, meaning that you'll get a bit more light onto an albeit smaller sensor. In terms of room available to capture footage, only 22 gigabytes of the 32 gigabytes in the Action 2 is actually available to capture footage. Whereas that is 28 gigabytes of the 32 gigabyte Go 2. And like I said, there is now a 64 gigabyte expanded edition available too. More of that in another video soon. And then there's the case for the Go 2. As well as acting as a battery and recharging case for the Go 2, it's a complete system for operating the camera and altering the vast majority of its settings if you don't have or don't want to use your phone or if you're busy using it for other tasks. This really is a massive plus for me compared to the potential of the Action 2 modular system. You can get third party ND filters for the Go 2 and they will apparently also be available for the Action 2. And there's even a macro adapter for the Action 2, but apparently there's quite a bit of vignetting for footage and photos in the accounts that I've read. So the Action 2 is here. It's not cheap, it's not that small, but it seems quite clever if it fits your needs and doesn't boil in front of your eyes. If you're more flexible and your budget isn't quite so big, then the Go 2 might be a better fit for you. Check out this video for more from me. Thanks for watching. I'm Saab Johal, and I'll see you here again soon, I hope.